YouTube. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry's so continuing my search for historical knowledge found here on YouTube. All right, today we're heading back to Sam Onella's channel for a video he did about three months ago. Um, so pretty, pretty new. And that is World War II's unluckiest ship, the William D. Porter. So I have no idea what's going on with this, but with Sam, he always pulls out these uh, interesting kind of uh, stories out there that oftentimes have kind of gone underneath you know, traditional mainstream mainstream history. And in the Salmonella comedic way, it's usually very entertaining. All right. Um, if you like this original video down below will be a link to the original. Make sure you go over there and give it a like, give it a subscription. If you haven't subbed to his channel, definitely recommend it. It's a lot of fun. All right. If you haven't subbed to my channel, be sure you do that. I'd um, love to have you around. Enable notifications so you can be around at our live streams and uh, um, live premieres. And down below, if you'd like to join our Discord server, uh, we got over 5,000 members. I'd love to talk history. I invite you to do that too. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Again, so World War II's unluckiest ship, the William D. Porter. Oh, man. Let's see what happens. Hopefully not too tragic. <laughs> Hey kids, now some philosophers have called boats the airplanes of the sea, but while every glamorous <laughs> Glennis has its okay. slow-mo shun, so too does JJ the Jetplane have his awful, awful counterpart. Her legacy in many ways resembles my middle school career, a three-year-long travesty plagued by blunder after blunder due to both gross incompetence <laughs> Career. Wait a a three-year-long travesty on the plagued by blunder after blunder, due to fires. gross incompetence and, and sheer fires. misfortune. With the only silver lining being that it's remembered by relatively few. Actual shirt I owned at the time, <laughs> the 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 uh, troll face. Great. How many of you were this were this kid in uh in in uh, junior high? You meet the USS William D. Porter, nicknamed the Willie D, which was a perfectly acceptable alias in the days before Don't Ask, Don't Tell. She was a Fletcher class destroyer, which, if you know Fletcher as well as I do, you know he's pretty high class at destroying. Like when he snapped off my DS screen during summer camp because he was oh, trying Fletcher. to get a better look. Didn't even apologize. He was just like, "Well, you're not supposed to bring video games to camp anyway." Even. Don't be that kid. Everyone knew that kid. Though everyone did. Fuck you, Fletcher. You were a counselor. You're supposed to be more mature than us. You're the <laughs> reason I grew up with a lingering resentment towards authority. And my only reprisal is that I got to draw you as a disgusting fat lard for millions of people. Actually, I think his name might have been Eric. Anyway, in July... Sounds like Sam's going through some issues here of his past and trying to get those out. <laughs> July of 1943, the ship was commissioned by the Navy and led by Lieutenant Commander Wilfred A. Walter. As her first real job, the Willie D was assigned to a top-secret escort mission across the Atlantic. Walter was like, all right, man, time to prove ourselves. I want to see you all on your A-game. And as its first act under military command, the ship didn't raise anchor properly and tore a massive chunk out of the ship next to it while pulling out. Okay, oh. rough start, but definitely not a sign of things to come the next day she met up with three other ships including two destroyers and a so i don't know if that's unlucky that's just uh incompetence <laughs> But definitely not a sign of things to come. The next day, she met up with three other ships, including two destroyers and a battleship known as the USS Iowa, and the fleet set off towards Africa. Given the clandestine nature of the operation, they were ordered to maintain total radio silence so as not to alert any subs that Makes might be sense. Makes below. sense. Suddenly, boom, bang, borf, Hare Krishna, huge explosion off the starboard quarter. They're like, holy shit, evasive maneuvers. Oh. But after however many minutes, the transmission comes in saying, Uh, hi, this is Wolfred D of the Willy Walter. I mean, uh, so a depth charge may have accidentally fallen off the ship, and we may have also forgotten to turn off the safety mechanisms on said charge, causing it to detonate immediately. <laughs> so if you heard a little noise a bit ago, no calls for alarm. Also, sorry for breaking radio silence. Love you. Bye. Sure. <laughs> All right, so this thing is ripped the front out of another ship because it didn't anchor properly and is now friendly fired and is breaking silence i guess he had to so yeah i don't know if this so far if they're saying the ship is unlucky unlucky it's just filled with incompetence, it seems. Shortly thereafter, a strange phenomenon was spotted near the ship. Officer, what in the rhyme of the ancient fuck is that? It appears to be a large wave, sir. Jesus Christ, they have that now? Basically everything that wasn't <laughs> tied down ended up being swept off, and one of the boilers in the engine room got foobarred. But fortunately, no crew members were taken away, except for the one that was. Later, the four ships <laughs> congregated in the waters east of Bermuda when the Iowa decided to test its anti-air abilities and launched a bunch of weather balloons for target practice. A few of these drifted towards the Willie D, and they took some pot shots just for fun, probably wrecking some happy albatross households in the process. But Walter was like, men, it's time to redeem ourselves. Spit those crayons out. Do you know the purple ones are bad for you? <laughs> Time for some impromptu torpedo drills on the Iowa. Yay! 
That was Narnar and the Pow Pow. They're going to douse their trousers when they see how good we tore those pedos. Say, you guys remember to uh, take the primer out of all of them before launching, right? Yes, sir. Yep. What? Fortunately, the Iowa didn't really have much valuable cargo that could be damaged in the event that the torpedo struck. Except a, except a multi-million dollar ship and a crew and stuff. Um, I guess context, you're going to want context here, right? So getting involved in the war, they're going to Northern Africa, right? Um, that was a place where the Americans tried to intervene, which um, Italians and Germans had taken over Northern Africa. Basically trying to take over the whole uh, Mediterranean and the Americans are trying to go in and when when America joins the war um, uh, trying to help that right help that effort in North Africa um, the North African campaign you don't hear very much because you hear usually it's it's been um, far more I don't know, a lot more imagery you get from fighting and uh, if, especially in the American perspective uh, the Western Front after D-Day and then the war in the Pacific the war in uh, Northern Africa has been um, largely kind of uh, glossed over which was actually where some of the first fighting the americans took place was oh except in for the Europe. second president or, of the united not in, states not in franklin Europe, delano roosevelt the who was being escorted to cairo as the whole point of the mission the next five minutes um by this time in the war by the time or by this time in in fdr's life for uh, franklin delano roosevelt the president who by the way had been elected to his fourth term which will is a record and will always be a record because after him, we have a constitutional law that a president can't be elected more than twice um, at any time. But anyway, he suffered from polio. And by this time in his life, he was almost completely wheelchair bound. And you actually don't see a lot of photos of him in his wheelchair because he didn't want to be viewed as such. Uh, maybe he thought it might weaken his image or something like that. And even when he needed to do uh, to do speeches... He had built these uh, these leg braces that would stand him up pretty much, and he would give his address like that, not in his uh, not in his wheelchair. But he doesn't um, survive to the end of the war. He actually dies less than a month uh, when uh, then then uh, when the war in Europe ended um, from his complications from polio. So he didn't get to see you know Hitler surrender or Japan surrender. It's Franklin Delano Roosevelt who was being escorted to Cairo as the whole point of the mission. The next five minutes aboard the Willie D were just total fucking chaos. Humid sacks of rice, hogs and bats sniffing each other, massive stereos. Commander, we really should radio them. No, I am not breaking any more rules. Do the flashy light thing. <laughs> hey, incoming signal from old iron brains, a uh, yuck. They're saying they're uh, going to reverse at full speed? What? Shit off a bow sprint, this ain't working! Fine, call him! FaceTime, Uvu, I don't give a hoot! The transmission <laughs> arrived in the nick. So, was that message of them going a, a full backwards, whatever, um, maneuver is, was not what they meant to do? It just, it, that's how the signal ended up showing, so, is that what they're saying? Like, what did they deliver in Morse code with the lights or something that, uh, um, I would presume if they're not gonna do radio contact or something? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, was that message just wrong? <laughs> To do that. I guess either way, it wouldn't have made a lot of sense, right? Think of time, and the torpedo detonated a safe distance away in the Iowa's wake. Of course, that didn't stop the entire crew of the Willie D from being arrested for, you know, shooting a torpedo at the president. Lawton Dawson, the <laughs> yeah. Elmer's eater from earlier, was initially sentenced to 14 years hard labor. Till FDR came out and was like, no, no, it's okay. Boys will be boys. Save. But we are sending you and the rest of Carnival Cruise Line to Alaska, where there's fewer things to ruin by being yourself. Get it, Carnival Cruise Line? Because you're the worst. And also clowns so they kicked it for a while in the illusions <laughs> otherwise right. known as the tale of the pregnant rat that makes up alaska this went on mostly without Ooh. incident except is that a real analogy i've never heard of that i hope it's not for when they were anchored outside an officer's home during a new year's eve party and a sailor got drunk and decided to fire off one of the five inch guns for a laugh ended up sending a bunch of his geranium straight to hell where they belong this is the worst crew i've ever heard of of a ship <laughs> Other than that, smooth sailing. Then they hung out at the Philippines for a bit before Central Command was like, all right, looks like you smooth skins are ready for actual missions again. There's no way, if, if they had heard this, MacArthur would have allowed these guys, right? He would not have wanted them in the fleet. Except you, you're going to clown college. And the Willie D was sent to the Battle of Okinawa under the leadership of some guy named Charles. Here they actually did some worthwhile stuff until June 10th... Uh, this is towards the end of the Pacific Campaign because um, Okinawa Iwo Jima were the last major... Battles errors, they were kind of the uh, the last defense for Japan. And this is 
um, among the blood, the bloodiest of the uh, between Okinawa and Iwo Jima, the bloodiest of the conflicts of the Pacific too. So this is not a light mission. This is the most difficult one that they have in the Pacific. 1945, when a kamikaze began to dive towards them, they weren't able to shoot it down, probably because it wasn't American, but it crashed in the water some ways away. By the way, kamikaze was used at this time at the end of the war uh, because materials were running low. They're running low on um, weapons, uh, ammunition, the, J the Japanese, and fuel. So it was basically just assumed that these pilots would, after you know, using their fuel and using their ammunition, that they would basically use themselves and their planes as, as a weapon with the kamikaze. What does that mean? It means like uh, something wins. I forget how that translates. Something divine wins or something like that. Um, basically, you know, you're, you're using yourself as, as a, as a, as a sacrifice that way. Cause you're committing suicide in the action, but, um, which by the way, was a devastating thing for the Americans to deal with is an enemy that was not only not afraid to die, but was actually expecting to die, which you just think of the psychological way you have to deal with that they're like phew crisis averted turn their attention elsewhere unintentionally driving right over where the bomber landed the plane was like the hell oh shit that's right <coughs> what? uh bonsai oh. about three hours of desperate repairs went by before the order to abandon ship was given and miraculously every crew member made it out alive by the time the ship sank just 12 minutes later so it just goes now nah, oh, okay so they 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 sailed over the the ship and it exploded, which was stupid for them to even get near that. Now they're actually sinking the ship and had to evacuate everybody. Gosh, see, now it's getting just, like, some of it was silly, but this is dangerous now. Just to show, everything has its silver lining. Everyone on the dipship gets to live. Every filthy Chuck E. Cheese ball pit has a delicious prize at the bottom. And the vast <laughs> nexus of pointless diversions we call the internet actually has a couple productive things to do on it, too. Sponsor time. Ad? Skillshare is an online Skillshare, learning community cool. with over 25,000 classes in design, business, technology, and these? more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. If you're like me, you've been mildly interested in... You know, actual animation for years, but felt too intimidated by the community <laughs> to really get your hands dirty. Skillshare has plenty of tools to smooth that learning curve down into a gentle exploratory slope. How about this one? Simple character. Because I should learn to actually edit and, 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 Look at me. and do more See editing later, and, and animating shits. or something. I'm off to autonomous Kurdistan. Join the more than seven million <laughs> people already learning today with a special offer just for my viewers. While Skillshare is already less than ten dollars a month, the first five hundred people who visit the link in the description can get a full year subscription for forty percent off. So please quit. Everyone wins. Start substantiating today. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and I'm a fellow with rubella. <laughs> all right. Uh, that That's one of my favorite. I think th that's one of my favorite Sam Manella videos, just because, I don't know, that story is crazy. I mean, it was tied the, the unluckiest shit, but it seems like the most incompetent crew that you could possibly have. That may be a better title there, but that was an interesting story, especially when you, you, you see that, like, they're involved in Okinawa and stuff, although it Sounds like they didn't help much because they ended up just getting their own ship destroyed. Uh, but that was that was great. I love the, the the humor of that. Hopefully, they able to add a few things. It you know if you didn't know the bad about FDR or Okinawa or the North African com, uh, campaign, hopefully that was uh, useful for you. But another great uh, video from Sam. Love his stuff. Um, please make sure you go down to the description. Click on the link to the original video so you at the very least give him a view, right, and the ad support over, and uh, like the video, subscribe to the video, and if you liked what you saw here, I'd love to have you sub, thanks for liking my video. Um, like I said before, uh, if you have not enabled notifications, I do a lot of live streams and premieres so you can come hang out with our uh, fun community that we have as well as uh, on Discord. Special uh, thank you to our channel members. Um, uh, that's that join button that you see underneath that you guys that uh, hopefully are enjoying those perks for our live stuff. You get the emojis, the uh, badges, and all that stuff. Thank you to all Patreon pledgers. Um, remember, if you would like to join Patreon, there's a link down below, and, and uh, all pledge levels starting a dollar a month will get you access to the polls I put up so you can get videos uh, re um, uh, featured on the channel. All right, with that, thanks again for watching. Thanks and first and foremost for being someone supporting the history community out here on YouTube and just being a part of that. All right, with that, we'll see you next time.